Davis. My name is Miss Anna Catherine Peel, and I'm a third grade teacher in the Gulfport School District at Pass Road Elementary. Today, I'm going to be covering the Mississippi College and Career Readiness Standard 30A1, the introduction to multiplication. But first, I want to start with a story. So, we're going to be reading Amanda Bean's amazing dream today. Then we'll be working on our activities. I can't wait to learn with you. Amanda Bean's amazing dream, a mathematical story. The story is by Cindy Neuschwander. The pictures are by Liza Woodruff and the math activities are by Marilyn Burns. I am Amanda Bean and I love math. I know all about counting and I'm very good at it. I can count by ones, twos, fives, and even tens. I can add up anything. The kids at school call me the bean counter. Hey, what are you counting, bean counter? They yell. Anything and everything, I yell back. I just like to know how many. I count every day, even when I'm on my way home. Now, we are learning about multiplying. I understand many things about multiplying. I know that it is like adding lots of things quickly. This is good. I know about the multiplication sign X. It means that things can come in groups or rows or even columns. This is also good. What I do not know are the multiplication facts. My teacher says it's important to learn these, but I'm not so sure. I think I can just keep counting. I tell my teacher this, he agrees. But he says counting is a longer way to find the same answer. Hmm, counting is just a longer way to find the same answer. Let's see what she means by that. I think about this when I get home. I think about this as I eat a snack in our kitchen. I look at the tile countertop. The countertop, I say. I must count all of these tiles. I notice that there are 12 columns of tiles. There are 12 tiles in each column. So we have 12 columns of tiles and 12 tiles in each column. It's a long time before I count all 144 tiles. But I am Amanda Bean and I like to work quickly. Maybe, just maybe, multiplying would be faster. I walk to the library to check out a book. One bookcase has seven shelves and nine books on each shelf. I am Amanda Bean and I count anything and everything. So I start counting. I finally figure out that there are 63 books in the bookcase. I'm happy to know this, but now the library is closing. It's too late for me to look for a book. Maybe I should learn to multiply. Maybe it would make counting easier. I'm still thinking about all of this when I go to bed. I'm very tired, but my mind will just not stop thinking about numbers. Once, when I could not sleep, my mother told me to count sheep. I stayed awake all night long counting them. The next morning, I had 6,727 sheep in my head. I don't think counting sheep's for me. Tonight, I will think about riding my bike. This is simple. There are only two wheels, two pedals, one seat, and one of me. I will imagine a quiet ride in the country, I whisper to myself. I can see the rolling hills, the big trees, and the green grass. <sighs> this is relaxing, I say as I begin to nod off. I'm pedaling along a quiet back road. The sun is shining and a gentle breeze is brushing against my face. This is relaxing. You think it's going to stay relaxing? Then I notice something. It looks like eight bicycles with sheep on them. How many wheels is that? I wonder. 
I start counting, but the sheep whiz by so fast, I cannot count all the bicycle wheels. Wait, I yell. I am Amanda Bean, and I count to anything and everything. I decide to follow them. I have to know how many wheels rolled by me. Then I wonder, how many legs do those sheep have all together? Now I really must catch up to those woolies on wheels. I really must know how many. So I pop harder and I breathe harder. Up the hill they go, up the hill I go. Around the bend they go, around the bend I go. The sheep stop at a barn and they get off their bikes. I get off my bike too. I do not stop to count the wheels. I follow the sheep. They go into the barn. I go in too. They reach into their fleecy pockets and each sheep pulls out five balls of beautiful yarn. Oh no, I cry out. Now I must count the yarn too. I am Amanda Bean and I count anything and everything. First, it was wheels. Then it was legs. Now it's balls of yarn. I cannot believe my eyes at what I see next. Seven grandmas, oh my goodness, seven grandmas come marching in with two knitting needles each. They take the yarn from the sheep and they start knitting sweaters. This dream is just getting too crazy. Now I must add knitting needles to my list of things to count. And each sweater has two arms. Should I count them too? The grandmas start wrapping all of the sweaters around me. Stop, I tell them. How can I count all the arms in the sweaters and all of the knitting needles and the balls of yarn and the sheep's legs and the bicycle wheels if I'm all wrapped up? Multiply, bleed the sheep. Multiply, 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 chant the grandmas. Multiply, I ask. I'm Amanda Bean and I count. Anything and everything, I say. Multiplying is counting, say the grandmas. It's just a fast way of counting. Yeah, agree the sheep. I wake up to find my mother wrapping me in her arms. I had an amazing dream. It was a noisy dream, my mother says. Today, I will start to learn the multiplication facts I announce. They are important to know if you want to find out how many, and you need to know fast. My mother agrees. I am Amanda Bean. I still love knowing how many, but now I can multiply anything and everything. And trust me, I never count any sheep. The end. If you're a teacher, um, I have included the back book pages and there are actually lots of multiplication activities. So for any teacher, any parent, any other adult students, if you want to read over it, that's awesome too. It just gives you some um, a variety of multiplication activities that you can use at home or in the classroom. So we're going to keep on going. This is just one more page of the multiplication activities because today we're going to be talking about equal groups. So as you saw in the library and the bakery, you could easily see those equal groups. There would be like six books on each shelf and there were seven shelves. Well, these equal groups are essential to multiplication. It's, I would say, one of the most important things you need to know. So when you multiply, you're going to be working with equal groups. And these groups of shelves that I have pictured here are equal. As you can see, we have one, two, three groups of shelves. But if you look within each group, there's two groups per a circle of shelves. Oh, sorry, there are two shelves per a circle of groups. So we have three groups with two shelves in each group. Now, these down here, we still have three groups, but in this circle, there are three shelves. In this circle, there's only one shell. In this circle, there are two shells. So that's not an equal group. 
it has to have the same number in each group, like two shelves, two shelves, and two shelves. So equal groups are essential. If it's not an equal group, don't even worry about doing multiplication because you won't be able to. It has to, has to, has to be an equal group. All right, so now we're going to be looking at equations. Now, in Amanda Bean, she talked about how she learned the multiplication equation, and it was an X. Now, that is the multiplication sign that we'll be using in our equations. That X stands for groups of. So I'm going to write that up here. Groups of. So when I say groups of, she said things like there were six groups of seven books in the library or there could have been six sheep with two legs on each sheep okay there are six groups of grandmas with four knitting needles in each group so that's what that x is going to stand for is our groups of Right here, we have our shelves again, and this is our shelves that were in an equal group. We want to always check that first. There are two in each group. So, what multiplication equation could you write to tell about the picture? Well, we need to figure out how many groups there are first. So, there's one, two, three groups. So, that's going to be our first number. We have a three. Now, we want it to say three groups of and figure out how many are in each group. So that's where that, that multiplication sign is going to come in, our x. So three groups of and how many are in each group? You're right, two. Three groups of two. So we are going to be doing three times two and eventually we're going to know our multiplication facts so fast that when we snap, you'll already have the answer. So three times two is... And you would say six because there are six shelves. For now, I'm going to let you skip count. So we have two, four, six. Three times two equals six. Let's look at some practice problems. Now we're going to have some fish. And it's going to ask us a few questions. First, the question it's going to ask us, well, how many fish tanks are there? Now, a tank is the container that the fish are in. So how many fish tanks do we have? Did you say three? Three is correct. We have three fish tanks. Now we've got to count how many fish are in each tank. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I want to check and make sure there's six fish in each tank because if there's six in one and seven in another and eight in another, those aren't equal groups and we're not going to be able to multiply. So let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six fish in each tank. Notice that you see that word each. That's going to be one of our keywords in multiplication because it's telling me how many are in those, those individual groups, okay? We don't want to say how many fish there are total yet because that's where our multiplication is going to come in. How many fish are there all together? Well, we could do six times three, but for now we'll skip count. Or we can even do what's called repeated addition, which is, is multiplication. So if you can skip count with me, we would say six, 12, 18, or we could do our repeated addition and say six plus six plus six. And we know six plus six is 12 plus six is 18. So we have 18 and I want you to tell me what they are. Fish, we have 18 fish. And really here you could say there are three tanks, six fish, so now we, it wants to know a multiplication equation we could write to tell about the fish. Well, if we're looking at it, we know that we have to tell how many groups there are first. Well, our groups in this case are fish tanks. So we have three groups because there are three tanks. Our groups of is going to be that multiplication sign, that X, three groups of six. Three times six equals 18. Sometimes we'll have our problems in what's called an array. So here, we really just focused on how they were in a tank. 
or in the shells, how many groups of shells there were, but sometimes we'll have an array. You can arrange the equal groups into rows and stack them on top of each other. This is called an array, and I'm going to show you some examples. The example I want to show you is an array through art. So this is a famous artist. His name was Kandinsky, right here. And these are his circles. He, he drew circles. Um, that's, that's what he, made, he became famous from. Um, to me, they kind of look like a gobstopper. So I like to think of my arrays as these Kandinsky circles. Now, we're going to look at how many rows we have first. Well, I have one, two, three, three groups of, hmm, let's see how many are in each row. We have three groups of one, two, three, four. So three times four. Three times four. We go the rows and then how many are in each. Okay, so we have three rows with four in each row. Alrighty, let's look at one more Kandinsky circle to practice. What multiplication equation could you write to tell about the picture? Hmm, I want you to try this one. Did you say four times six or four groups of six? If so, you're right. And that's the end of our lesson. Thank you for tuning in today to learn our introduction to multiplication. Can't wait to see you soon.